Okay, and now I'm going to go over some of the lore that I found interesting and some of the game files that I found interesting in this FNAF 2 game. <sighs> okay, stick with me here. Okay, so let's start off with the newspapers and the paychecks. The newspaper says Grand Reopening, Vintage Pizzeria Given New Life. It also says, like, what could go wrong. <laughs> so this lets us know that this particular place is a revamped version of an older place. This later newspaper says, Robot Scrapped, Freddy Fazbear's is closing. And it closed after being open for only a, sh a few short weeks. So yeah, the place is called Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. The new animatronics were scrapped due to possible malfunctioning. However, the original characters are being kept in hopes of a possible reorganization of the company. And then you have a quote from the CEO. It's a minor setback. We are confident that we will reopen someday, even if it's with a much smaller budget. I like how the CEO from both the first and the last game are very adamant about keeping Five Nights at Freddy's open and letting them live on, so to speak. And then you have the pink slip, which says, uh, you're fired, get out, uh, reasons, tampering with the animatronics and odor. It also has a note saying, first day on the job, really? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark. And it's employee number three. That's also interesting to me. Okay, and then you have the map, and the map has 13 rooms, including the bathrooms and the show stage in the back. And then there are 12 cameras. Also, the older animatronics, such as Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy, they all have parts of them missing. Chica has no hands, Bonnie is missing his face, and Foxy doesn't have an ear. So it's likely that pieces of the old animatronics are now in the new animatronics. Also, I think it's interesting that Mangle has two faces and Bonnie's is missing. <laughs> also, Toy Chica, uh, sometimes you'll actually see her with her beak, but during her jump scare and throughout the night, she removes her beak. Also, BB and JJ just seem really strange and out of place. JJ just has one sequence throughout the entire game. Also, I'm pretty sure this endoskeleton that shows up in the vents and is also in the party room is Foxy's because of the ears. There are two animatronics shown in shadow. Uh, one is Freddy and the other one is Bonnie. Bonnie's in particular is really creepy and random. You also have this little paper boy and he'll sometimes move. Also, if you look at the walls of this place, it seems really run down. Or maybe they just kept it really untidy. Who knows? Okay, now I want to talk real quick about the mini games. Uh, in the Take Cake to the Children uh, mini game, the voice in the background is actually spelling out Save Him, which I assume is referring to the kid in blue. And if it is, then we know that that child is a boy. In Foxy's Go 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 mini game, there are five children, and by the end of the game, they turn gray. There's also no hidden dialogue in this minigame. In the Give Gifts Give Life minigame, there are also five kids. There are four which you give presents to, and then give life to, and then there's a fifth one right before Freddy's head jumps out at you. And there is dialogue in this that spells out help them. The Save Them minigame is the one that I find most interesting, and I'm kind of need your guys' help with something in this mini game that bothers me. Um, hopefully maybe someone out there can shed some light on this. But first of all, there are also five kids um, in different rooms in this mini game. There are also five blood stains in this mini game, which I have marked on the map here. And you're always following the puppet into the party room where he disappears. And then on very rare occasions, you'll see the purple guy and he'll come after you. And when he gets you, instead of going to a red screen, you go to a purple screen. But something that's been stumping me with this game is there are three animatronics in the back room, which I'm guessing is the parts and service room. And you're playing as Freddy. I'm not actually sure which Freddy though. Um, you do see the other Freddy toy Freddy on the stage in the stage room, so I'm 
guessing that this is Withered Freddy, but he is a lot smaller than the other animatronics. He also is missing his hat though, and you can see in one of the scenes from the game that Freddy's hat does fall off. However, I do find this particular sequence very confusing because I'm assuming that this yellow animatronic in the corner here is Chica, but I'm not actually sure because it doesn't really show her beak. And this could possibly be Freddy. And the reason why this is important to me is because there is a line from Phone Guy that one of the animatronics had been moved. He says that there was a spare one in the back, a yellow one, and that someone used it. Also, something interesting about this minigame is that you'll see Golden Freddy randomly appearing and disappearing throughout the various rooms. And sometimes he'll have a gleam in his eyes, and sometimes his eyes will just look dead. So I'm trying to figure out which animatronic was used for the incidents that happened. And we know it had to be a yellow animatronic, and the only two yellow animatronics in this game are Chica and Golden Freddy. So I'm guessing it had to be one of those two. This is, of course, if we don't count the third game where Golden Bonnie is introduced. But yeah, please share your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments below because um, I'm pretty stumped with this one. Moving on. So the majority of Phone Guy's dialogue is him explaining the game and how it works, but you do get a couple of hints here and there of something else going on within the game. So in night one, he welcomes you to your new summer job at the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And he's here to talk you through a couple things during your first week. He also says he wants us to forget anything that we heard about the old location and that the old restaurant was kind of left to rot. They've also spent a small fortune on the newer animatronics, and they use facial recognition, have advanced mobility, and they let them walk around during the day. They're also tied into a criminal database, so they can detect a predator a mile away. He then goes on to say that you're the second guard to work at that location. The first guy finished his week, but complained about conditions and then they switched him over to day shift. He also says the robots were never given a proper night mode. So when it gets quiet, they think they're in the wrong room. So they're gonna try to find where people are and thus attracting them to you. All right, and then we're gonna go on to night two. And he says, I'm sure you've noticed the older models sitting in the back room. Those are from a previous location. So we know that the older animatronics were from an older location and that they now use them for parts. They at first wanted to repair them, and they even started retrofitting them with some newer technology, but they were so ugly and the smell was apparently really bad. So the company decided to go a whole new direction, and the older model shouldn't be able to walk around. Film Guy goes on to say that he loves the old characters, and if we ever saw Foxy the Pirate. He then says that he never liked that puppet thing. It was always thinking, and it can go anywhere. And then we move on to night three. He then brings up Foxy again, asking if he appeared in the hallway. He then says that Foxy was always his favorite, and that they tried to remake Foxy, because they thought the first one was too scary. So they redesigned him to be more kid-friendly, and put him in Kid's Cove, to keep the toddlers entertained. He then says that kids these days just can't keep their hands to themselves, and that the staff literally had to put Foxy back together at the end of every shift. So eventually, they stopped trying and they left him as some type of take-apart-put-back-together attraction, and that the employees now refer to him as The Mangle. Also on night three, Phone Guy says he wanted to ease our mind about any rumors that we might have heard lately. He says you know how these local stories come and go and seldom mean anything, and that he can personally assure us that whatever is going on out there, and however tragic it may be, it has nothing to do with our establishment. It is just all rumor and speculation, people trying to make a buck. And this is what I found really interesting. He says that our guard during the day, meaning the day guard, has reported nothing unusual, and he is on watch from opening till close. 
And then we move on to night four. And on night four, Phone Guy informs us that there is somewhat of an investigation going on and that we may end up having to close for a few days. He wants to emphasize, though, that this is really just a precaution and that Fazbear Entertainment denies any wrongdoing and that these things just happen sometimes. And he thinks it'll all get sorted out in a few days. He also says, just as a side note, to avoid eye contact with any of the animatronics tonight. Someone may have tampered with their facial recognition systems and that they're not sure, but the characters have been acting very unusual, almost aggressive, towards the staff. They interact with the kids fine, but when they encounter an adult, they just stare. And then we get to night five, and Phone Guy says to keep a close eye on things tonight. And from what he understands, the building is on lockdown. No one is allowed in or out, especially concerning any previous employees. And that once they get it all sorted out, we may be moved to day shift. They're also going to try to contact the original restaurant owner and that he thinks the name of the place was Fredbear's Family Diner and it had been closed for years and he doubts they'll be able to track anyone down. And then we go to our last night, night six, and Phone Guy says, what on earth are we doing there? Didn't we get the memo? The place has been closed down at least for a while. Someone used one of the suits. They had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. He then tells us to finish our shift because it's safer than leaving in the middle of the night. They had one more event scheduled for tomorrow, a birthday, and that will be on day shift and to wear our uniform and stay close to the animatronics and make sure they don't hurt anyone. Once the place closes down, Phone Guy will probably take the night shift himself. He then says good night and good luck. Again, the most interesting thing that I found with these files was Phone Guy saying that someone used one of the suits. Uh, they had a spare in the back, a yellow one, and someone used it. There are also five bodies in every minigame except the Take Cake to the Children minigame, in which there is only one child. Also, Purple Guy, in the Take Cake to Children minigame and in the Foxy Go 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 minigame, is different looking than the Purple Guy in the Save Them minigame. And that's what I found interesting about these particular files. Again, these are all just theories, like I don't actually know like what Scott had in mind to begin with. Um, these are just my thoughts on what I found. And as always, I hope you all enjoyed. If you think I left anything out, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try to cover it in my next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye!